I'm not gonna lie, there are some jokes that do work, there are some funny moments, and there are some outdated jokes, and then there's this. We rapping now? We rapping? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Show them who you really are, notorious P.I.G. Hey there guys, hope you welcome back to another awesome video, it's time for another movie review. Today's movie review is going to be of Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. So Space Jam 2 is clearly the sequel to the 1990 Space Jam. It doesn't have Michael Jordan, but this time around we have LeBron James, we follow him and his son, and his son is taken to this Toon world, and it's up to LeBron James to go rescue his son. I don't remember who this m this movie was directed by, but I just want to kind of give a little background, a little just, I'm going to be a little honest, before this movie was released, and the idea of Space Jam 2, a sequel to Space Jam, 1990 Space Jam, was exciting. This was just in production, and also there's things speculating for years, since I think 2015 or 2016, since they announced a Space Jam 2. Now, I have a bit of conflicting emotions about the first Space Jam movie. It's kind of a complicated situation, but I can at least appreciate and respect people that love the movie or hate the movie. So whether I like the movie or hate the original Space Jam, the idea of it getting a sequel and you have LeBron James and everything that was built up behind this movie was pretty good. It was really exciting. However, the final product isn't as exciting, it really just wars down. Why is that? Let's get to the ups and downs of this movie. So let's get into our main lead, LeBron James. Now LeBron James was hilarious in a movie called Trainwreck, but he is a train wreck in this film. It feels like he just isn't really acting his best, his strongest, or his funniest at all. Especially when your co-stars are the Looney Tunes. Now you'd think they're comedy and their humor would rub off of LeBron James, but unfortunately it doesn't. As for the Looney Tunes, they're good, they're fine, they're funny when they have their moments. I will give them credit, it does look cool when they kind of enter our world, I guess, how they look all live actionified or whatever that effect is, but kind of cool. I mean, everyone's, the gang's mostly here, Lola's back, she's now voiced by Zendaya, which is really a plus, and I'm at the same time, it's unfortunate because they don't really do so much with her character because they basically have Lola just go, I'm empowerment, and that's it, really. They don't really give her that much charm, they don't really give her that much humor, and that's unfortunate because Zendaya has great charisma. Seeing her in various com comedies and just seeing her in the MCU movies, she has some humor to her and some charisma to her, and they don't really put that talent to good use. And since we're on some positives here, and I know he's a little cheesy, he's a bit cliche, but Don Cheadle's character and him as the villain is kind of a little hilarious. And it looks like he's just having a blast playing the villain, just having a good old time. And there are, it, it is kind of funny, there are moments that his villain feels a lot like Hook in the movie Hook, how he's trying to influence LeBron James' son and be like, you want to play that basketball game, you want to play that baseball game, you know, I could play, be at your baseball games, I could be at your basketball games, I can be that guy for you, you know, like that sort of thing. I know it's a little cliche-ish, but it's kind of funny how they use that. And I'm not gonna lie, there are some jokes that do work, there are some funny moments, like I think it was hilarious having Michael B. Jordan as a cameo, and there are some outdated jokes, and then there's this. We rapping now? We rapping? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Show them who you really are, notorious P.I.G. And unfortunately, the negatives and the downs of this movie don't stop there. The other thing I feel that doesn't work for me, which I get what they're trying to go for, but it doesn't work for me, is how you see all these IPs, all these Warner Brothers IPs that Warner Brothers owns, from all sorts of things from Hanna-Barbera to DC to anything that is under Warner Brothers' belt. Seeing all those characters is great. It's cool because you see them in the background, they're like little Easter eggs, and you kind of point out who, who's over there, who's there, and look at who's there, nostalgia, and all these other things. But 
one, it feels like the reason why they're doing this is because so many other movies have done that sort of similar thing, taking their own IPs and putting them in a movie, like Lego Movie, like Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet, all these movies, several other films that have done this idea before, it just kind of feels like they're just being lazy and doing it again. And the other problem with seeing all these characters in the background is you're not even interested in the game. The game, the basketball game itself is not even that interesting. So you're more focused on the background when you should be focusing on the foreground. So, and it, it's not distracting, but it it kind of does get a little distracting to see all these characters. I mean, it's cool because you see the mask, you see Joker, you see Pennywise, you see other iterations of various of characters and IPs, like I've said, but it's just, you're more focused on that than the actual plot itself and it's kind of a little sad and it might be saying something on a side note the monsters if you want to call them the monsters i'm very 50 50 on i like their designs but at the same time i hate them because they are creative at the same time they feel just like basic i don't know that's just me the rest of this movie feels very basic at times very lazy at times and just like how the first space jam movie back in 1990 was an a product of its era and it was the product of the 90s. This movie, unfortunately, is a product of 2021. So I'm going to give Space Jam 2 a new legacy. I think I'm gonna give it a solid D just to be a little bit fair. And don't get me started on the soundtrack because the soundtrack in this movie is forgettable especially when compared to the original 1990s Space Jam movie. Like I said, I may or may not be a fan of the first Space Jam movie, but their music and what the score and the soundtrack had was a lot better than this film, especially when that movie had artists like R. Kelly, Seal, Coolio, Busted Rhymes, Method Man, Be Real, of Cypher's Hill. So Space Jam 2, A New Legacy, have you guys seen it? What did you think of it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. And just the thank you and a shout out to my viewer brandon williams for requesting this to me real quick you're awesome and as always guys thank you so much for watching if you liked this video please smash the like button if you're new to my channel please subscribe i do awesome videos every day of every week make sure you ring that bell I do new videos every day of every week share the video with family and friends all the good stuff and more leave some suggestions in the comments section you name it i'll look into it and feel free to leave some questions in there down there too as well so eventually i can start building up a q a look out for more regular reviews and some holiday related content for the remaining of December. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.